Hi, this is Chris over at 3D Palace. Welcome to the tutorial. This is called Chaos Scorpion. If you're wondering what it is, well, hopefully, by the time I've finished, there might be a preview of it. Until then, just bear with me. Okay, what I'm going to be doing in this part is creating the first part of our Chaos Scorpion, which is the legs. So, <coughs> anyone who's seen our Sentinel tutorial will know pretty much what to expect. What I've got to do here is actually build and create the leg system. And things we've learned off the last tutorial I did on making Mecha is that it's best to divide it up into various segments. Which is what I'm going to do in advance with this one. So I'm going to start with the lower leg, work my way onto the feet, then do the upper leg. From there I'm going to work onto the torso, sorry, onto the carapace, then the torso, then the tail, then additional details. Okay, so, may as well start now then. And I'm going to start off in the left viewport by making a cylinder. Now then, I want to get the size of this cylinder right first time, so I'm going to drop down here. I'm going to make it a height of about 50. I'm not using real world units. Give it a radius of about 70. There we go. And I'm going to drop into my left viewport. Right click, convert to edible polygon. And what I'm going to do from this is create the first piece that we're going to need. Okay, going to my perspective viewport again. I'm going to zoom extends all. Now off the bottom of this, down here, I'm going to press F4 so I can see my polygons better. I'm going to get a nice view of the bottom polys. There we go. Now if I select this one and just click grow, that's the selection that I want there. I'm going to inset it just a tiny amount. Now we've got a problem here in what I've created, because if you look there's too many height polygons. So let's kill this. We can easily create it again just in the left viewport. Cylinder. Let's change the height segments to 1. Now if you can remember from what I just did, radius is 70, height is 50. Right click convert to edible polygon. Right, now I'm going to select these polygons here and I'm going to inset them by about that much. With these inset I can now move down a little bit on them. So I'm going to extrude just a small amount first. And I want to view these from the bottom so I'm going to drop in my bottom viewport make sure the bottom and these polygons are active and I'm going to click view align that's going to flatten them out for me now I'll drop in my perspective viewport again I'm going to use my move tool and just move on the z-axis there we are now with that done I'm going to do a minor bevel so I just need to drop down here only about that much and click ok now I'm going to turn it over let's check it looks ok then I can extrude this piece down about so far there we are zoom extends on this piece make sure it looks ok which it does OK, now what I'm going to have to do is, already, I need to start fleshing out some detail from this piece. And detail is in this part here. We've also got a part here which I need to work on for this polygon. So I'm just going to extrude this out. Just collapse on the x-axis a little. Move this bit back in. There we are. Now turn it back around again. OK, so, I need some borders on this. You probably don't understand what I mean, but I need to kind of draw some bordering onto it. Now, a good thing to do would be to get rid of some of these vertices that we don't need and aren't planning on using, which I can do just by using the target weld. This will leave us basically a nice clear palette for cutting some lines into.
There we are. Now, let's look at this shape. I want to put a kind of embossed shape into this. A couple of ways of doing this. Easiest way, like I said, though, is just going to be a cut, probably. But let's start it off by doing an insert. So I'm going to insert there, like that. Now I'm going to do a cut. We want to try and just not cut it too much, just enough. There we are. Now what other shapes do we need? Well, we need a shape here as well. Just looking at the shape here on my rough plans. Now if there's any of these that are in the wrong place, it's easy enough just to move these vertexes because they're not affecting anything else in the short term anyway. So I'm just going to rotate this around, make sure it looks OK. Now I'm going to do some repositioning. Always be careful on how you reposition your vertexes, by the way. So I'm going to try and get these to match up as much as possible. So sometimes it's easier moving a pair at a time. There we are. Now then, these top ones here, I'm just going to do a target weld. Okay, and now, if I select my polygon, oops, Take that back. Make sure I've got this rotated so that I can see what's going on. I'm just going to extrude it slightly. Now if we look at it, it's, it's extruding to an angle, which we don't really want. So if I detach this piece from the extrusion, it'll extrude straight out. I can then extrude this piece separately, like that, and then attach that piece. I'm about to do now. So I'm just going to zoom extends on that piece there. Delete it. Same goes with this piece. Delete that too. And I'm just going to create a polygon to go in between. Now remember there's a polygon at the top and the bottom here. So polygon created. That makes it much more even for our extrusion here. Also what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten these down, which I can do just using a target weld again, which maintains the overall shape of the object for us, like that. <coughs> okay then, now we're going to move up here a little bit. Set this to zoom extents all again. Now we've got our nice big round piece here, and so what I'm going to do with that is do an inset. And then I think I'm going to do a little bit of an extrude onto there. There we are. And then inside here I'll be able to add some details, or a picture, or a decal, or whatever, in my own time a little bit later on. Now. Under here, we need to start adding a few more details as well, though. So, just view it from the bottom. And I'm going to get rid of some of these little vertexes we're not going to be using. So, there we are. And if we look at the 
the bottom here we're going to have two cylinders coming out of it. So I'm just going to change this first to O uh, leg O1 lower. Okay, that'll make things slightly easier for us. Now I'm just going to select this piece here. Now this is where the cylinder is going to come off, and I want to attach them to it. So I'm going to make a cylinder. Click on Auto Grid. This will enable me to build it anywhere on the object rather than in world space. And let's check my size. There's going to be a large cylinder at the fore, and then a smaller one at the aft, and they're going to have to connect. Now to make things easier for me, I'm going to make them only 12 sided. So that's one. A slightly smaller one here, two. There we go. I'll just reduce the height in line with this one, which is a height of 60. And so should this one. There we go. Now then, I'm going to hit F3, and I'm going to convert these both to edible polygons. I like modelling like this because it makes texturing a lot easier, by the way, where you're just adding pieces on. Because you can select by element if you do it this way. And if you select by element, you can assign whole textures to a single element. You'll see what I mean in a second. Right, so first things first, though, let's just make this all one object. Okay, this is all now one mesh. But if I wanted to select just this cylinder, all we'll I have to do is click on it, or this one, or the main piece pretty useful. Anyway, F3, F4, make sure we can see what we're doing. I'm going to zoom in a bit, because I'm going to need to create some polygons. So I'm going to get rid of two polygons on the inside for each of these. It's two. Get rid of this one as well. Okay, we're going to do a create. Here's the create tool. You've seen me use it just before. Piece of cake to use. Remember the first time I came across the create tool? I've been doing things the long way for years. You're always finding new things to do when you're using 3D Studio Max. In fact, you're always finding new things to do when you're using 3D in general. And believe it or not, I found out about the Create tool after watching a friend of mine doing some work in Lightwave. So, go figure. There we are. So that connects those two parts there together. Now I'm going to ease this a little bit. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Actually, I think I'll leave them where they are. Just until I've done one more thing, which is inserting these. So I'm going to bevel them out first. There we are. Now I'm going to extrude them in. Out, rather. I'm going to add a bevel just to these two parts. Okay. Now then, I want to straighten out these pieces a little bit because if you look, I'm just going to turn on ignore back facing. They're not circular anymore, but we can bring them back to their circularness just by doing this. There we are. Now we've got these two pieces here, so I'm going to insert those again. Scratch my hand. There we are. There we go. I'm going to zoom extents all. I want to extrude these. Like that. Now, we've got a bit of predicament here because I need to create this piece all over again for it to plug into. Now, this would normally mean having to model it all over again, but of course all we need to do really is 
if I go here and select this piece just detach it temporarily I'm now going to make a mirror copy of it click OK now I'm just going to reattach this piece again now this piece here I can just bring down I'm going to center its pivot there we go so if I bring this piece down here and I think I'm going to wipe out some of its polygons that we don't need just click delete turn off ignore back facing and do it again turn this over I'm going to go over here and get rid of these two polys one there and one there now all I have to do is raise this up into place there we go and now I can attach it Okay, and we're starting to get a more completed model already. Then at the bottom, we want to create yeah another one of these cylinder bits that's going to attach onto this block, but with a smaller cylinder. So, if we head off into our left viewport again, now if you remember, the cylinder's 50 high, so as long as you remember that, we'll be fine. That's a sphere, silly me. Cylinder, turn off auto grid. So if we make it 50 by 50, which I'll modify over here. Okay. Let's convert it to an editable polygon. And head over into this viewport here. Now we can already see which parts I want to change, so I select these four here, I inset them, then extrude a tiny bit. Now if I go up here, press T to go to my top viewport, and then just do view align back into my perspective now all I've got to do is just bring this up until it intersects scale it out a little bit this way there we are and as you see we've got the first part of a complicated leg model starting to come together already Don't worry if you don't understand, you'll understand better when it's placed in context. So. Anyway, drop back down here again. I'm going to make that running edge that I like so much for this kind of model. And extrude it in. Don't not too much. There we go gives us a rather nice detail. And over here I'm going to attach that piece there. And I can turn it around. Just do a quick render. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, I want to start adding detail straight away to this as well. Obviously so that we know it's our model. So first things first, I'm going to press F4 and let's drop into our left hand view so our left view on this is the detailed view turn off grid just hit F3 and F4 now then places where we can put our rivets 
which are going to be tiny little hemispheres incidentally. Firstly let's make our cylinder that's going to be our rivet. Now we're going to use the auto grid feature. There we are. Make sure it's got a radius of 2.5. I've just made a cylinder haven't I? Uh, I just spare sometimes. Right, radius of 2.5. Here we are. There's no way you need that many segments. Also, it can be a hemisphere. That's not a problem. Now, just hemisphere that up. There we go. I'm just going to check that looks OK, so zoom extends by object. I prefer not to have a gap behind it. OK. Now I can drop back into my left viewport. And we're going to rename this piece here the uh, rivet head. We don't need to convert it to an editable polygon. And all I'm going to do now is just... Now you could make an array, which would be quite easy for this. So, But another simple way of just copying it is effect pivot only. If we take this pivot and just dump it right down here in the very middle. Press G if you want to see the grid, by the way. Let's dump it right about here. Just so we can see. Turn off effect pivot only and then go to the rotate tool and we go to there. Now then, number of copies, well one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen copies. There we go. Now if we look, that wasn't moved across quite enough, so let's move it a little bit further. And we'll do 17 copies again. That's slightly better. Right then, so now we can zoom out, we've got our rivets in place on the top there. Now, rivets need to go here as well. So we'll take a rivet. For pivot only, so to object. Let's drag it over here. Now that I'm going to make sure that it's flush. Which it isn't. There it is. And now it's flush. I'm going to decorate this piece here with some rivets too. And one here. Maybe we want a nice industrial look for this. There we go. And uh, maybe move one in the middle of here as well. It's all good. There we are. Now then, if I pull back a bit, we could do with adding some riveting down here as well, which isn't a problem. Got all the adaptable rivets. So we'll move it down here. Drop into our perspective viewport. just splat this into the side of this piece here. There we go. Now then, down here. Zoom in a bit. I'm going to put our rivets in here too. 
So what I'm going to do is just drag one straight across to here. Then I'm going to grab these two and just twist them around. You don't have to do this, but it does add some nice detail to the model. There we are. And zoom out again. So then now we have our hinging, our riveting rather, which I am now going to attach. If I click that little button there, it opens up this big window which is full of the brim of lovely rivets. And I can just group select the entire lot and attach them. There we go. And we now have just one object in our level in our list again. Okay, so I hereby declare this part of the tutorial just about done. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Now, in the next part, we're going to move on to adding the foot claw. Then after we've done the foot claw, we're going to move on to adding the upper leg. With the upper leg and the foot claw done, we can then move on to cloning this off and starting to look at making the torso. And then we can start making armor and all the other fun, cool things. So I'll see you in the next part of the tutorial. Until then, take care. And go and grab some coffee.